Once again, good friends, Brian from Apex Detail. This is yet another installment or segment of Mail Call. This is where I can answer your questions face to face, where nothing gets lost in translation, trading emails. Let's get right into this. Okay, let's start off here. Jose, I would really love to see you doing a full interior detail or a full car detail from start to finish so I could see the process. I'm going to be purely honest with you here. I, I, I see a lot of the channels are really successful with those videos, but I'm going to pass on those for one simple reason. When I first started my business, I had to do those types of details. Um, those are uh, the, the best ways to get rolling in your business and get things started. And I'm very thankful nowadays after all of these years that I don't have to do that type of detail anymore. Um, the only time I really do a detail uh, in the interior, and my son handles that, is when they are included in a full protection package. What I specialize here in is clear coat, uh, paint correction, and paint protection. Full car protection, but mostly in the paint. I have spent a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of, a lot of training on clear coat, and um, I'm, I don't know everything about clear coat, but I know a whole lot and how to preserve it, both during the correction process and then when it comes to protection. And for me to have to go back and and do that type of a video is like kind of going backwards for me to where I first started out in the business doing trash cars like that. Um, the interiors, but it, I mean, the stuff that goes on in the interiors, what people do with sneezing and bubble gum and coughing and, you know, throwing up and all kinds of stuff you see in the interior vehicles that needs to be cleaned up, especially if it's a, a minivan where a full family uh, needs to use it. Um, I'm glad there are people that do it. To, just to be perfectly honest, I'm glad I don't have to do that type of detail anymore. So let's move on. Uh, the second question from Dave. He wants to know about, uh, does the chemical resistance test that I do in my videos translate to real world um, beating that a car takes? I've men I mentioned it before in some videos. I've also pinned it up in the comments section in some of my videos that there is no substitution for what Mother Nature can dish up uh, to your vehicle, especially in my area. It's really harsh. And to tell you the truth, what I'm throwing at these panels is a break compared to what they get in my area. Rainfall pH scale is a 4.7, where 7 is neutral. And that's really get, getting towards the acidic. Uh, we have a lot of industry in this area, and it really has an effect on, on fallout and rainfall. Hard water spots. Um, we have a lot of uh, forest areas here, and uh, tree fallout is very acidic as well from a lot of different trees. And if tree fallout falls in your car, leaves, pine needles, sap, all that kind of stuff is, is I'm just putting it all in one category, lands in your car and it's moist and the sun pops out, within that first hour it could start to etch and eat through your clear coat already. That's how acidic it is. Plus all the other stuff that splashes up on the roadway. I already took a sample out of the puddle in front of the shop and there were 28 different chemicals just out of that one little uh, puddle alone. That goes from antifreeze, motor oil, diesel, um, runoff from the properties on either side of the road included. That's a lot of chemicals and you can combine that all together in one soup. What I'm spraying onto the panels for a chemical resistance test is nothing compared to what a car in my area has to deal with. So, no, it really doesn't translate because it's much harsher out there. But it does give me, uh, I really do learn a lot from those chemical resistance testing, from the different chemicals I spray on there, uh, the way uh, a protection uh, product will break down because of those chemicals. Uh, yes, I I've learned a lot, but no, they do not uh, even come close to what Mother Nature can do to your car. So I hope that helps. Okay, Kenneth Smiley wants to know what type of gloves do I wear? Um, do I wear the same kind when I'm doing either detailing or mechanical work or painting? Um, and do I rec uh, recommend a certain type of, of uh, nitrile glove? 
I just use these. These are economical. These are safeguards. They're uh, latex free if you case you have allergies. And I use this for every task I do here in the shop, including detailing, um, interiors, uh, mechanical work, uh, if I'm doing some painting. And it's mostly for the protection of uh, chemical transfer from whatever I'm using um, into my skin. Uh, also, the protection, uh, keeping us protected from germs as we work on um, some of the interiors, if they are included in one of our packages, keeps us safe. And then also keeping the surface of the car safe after we're done cleaning it so we don't get smudges and fingerprints and, you know, all that other stuff behind. Okay, next, has uh, Edward has a couple good questions about... Uh, ways to strip the paint, IPA or panel preps, uh, what I recommend or if I'm making an IPA, what is the cocktail? What's the solution? What's the percentage, the dilution ratio? First of all, uh, to be perfectly honest, off camera, what I'm doing up on myself, I'm using something like Eastwood here. Um, this is a wax and grease remover. This is a professional product that I don't feel comfortable putting out there um, just to the general public. It, it, I'm used to the surfaces on cars and I don't let it get on plastic trim and uh, I spray it onto a, a damp towel first so it kind of dilutes it. The, the stuff is really not dilutable. It likes to separate from anything you dilute it with so uh, diluting it in a bottle and spraying it but you can dilute it naturally in, in a damp rag and use it that way. It really does a great job cleaning off old waxes and sealants. And that's the only time I'll use that. When it comes to um, correction, and I'm using an IPA solution to wipe off residue from polishes or um, compounds, it's going to be no more than 12% in a 32-ounce spray bottle. And you can, you can buy the IP out of the store three different ways. 91%. Uh, 70%. Uh, and also, very rarely, you'll find it at 50%. So, if, if you have uh, in the store and you pull out a 91% uh, IP bottle uh, and you have a 32-ounce spray bottle, pour in 4 ounces of that 91% IPA into a 32-ounce spray bottle and then add the rest water. If you have the second most common, which is 70%, dump uh, 8 ounces into a 32 ounce spray bottle and then the rest water and that will bring you up to about 12, 12 and a half percent, 13 percent um, solution in a spray bottle. I don't recommend going any higher percentage than that. Um, you definitely don't want to use anything, even this or the IPA solution on a fresh paint because the, the particles haven't cross-linked yet and haven't cured, uh, but Depending on the type of clear, really soft clear, you, if you go any stronger than 12%, you can really soften it up even further and cause a little bit of damage. And because uh, a lot of us aren't familiar with all the different types of clear coat, I would just stick with that 12% and you'll be safe no matter what you're using it on. Richard L. wants to know how far he can polish with 3D1 and a Eurofiber 50-50 pad before he has to clean out the pad. To keep the pad 100% effective, and to um, eliminate any um, chances of pigtails or causing any more damage, especially if you're working on really soft clear coat. I, if you're working on a three by three section or a two by two section, clean it out after every pass if you have the means, or at the most, every other pass. That'll keep your pad effective. You'll get work done quickly. You'll be um, effective and yet safe and not causing harm to the surface you're working on. Okay, Sandro H. has more of a suggestion than, than a question, and they're, they're both really good uh, ideas on videos. He enjoys my uh, product reviews and, and the podiums that I do for them in each video, and he would like me to do those at the end of each year, uh, the top three products uh, for each category. I could do that, absolutely. Whatever you want to see, I'll, I'll put it together. And a second idea, equipment. He would like to see um, me go over all the equipment I use um, during a day, during a detailing process. I know I've done that with my chemicals and polishers. I haven't done it with the rest of the equipment, so yeah, I could throw something together. Um, and hey, if you, want to, if you guys have an idea for a video and you want to see something, 
um, down in the emails or down in the comment section of the videos. Sure, absolutely, I'll throw something together for you guys. Hans wants to know about coatings on glass. Um, coatings for clear coat, can they go ahead and just put it right on the glass too? I've seen some do that. It could cause uh, streaking or a glare at nighttime if you go ahead and put it on the windshield. I go ahead and apply dedicated windshield coating. Maybe if you want to do it to the side and the back windows and it's not smudging or smearing and not giving you a hard time, go ahead. But on the windshield, stick to a dedicated uh, windshield coating. Uh, I don't want to get you in, into trouble or, or have any problems with a glare or smearing and um, then that will hinder your, your sight um, of, of vision through that windshield. Okay, Vaughn Harrison has three quick questions. Let's uh, take care of those. The first one, how often do I service or change the grease in my dual action polishers or the rotary? It's going to be once a year or every 200 corrections, whichever comes first. The second question has to do with uh, trim on a Jeep Wrangler. I guess he was off-roading and the, the trim is stained from the mud, has etching. He's tried everything to uh, no prevail. One thing you could try is the McKees floor mat and bed liner restoration. I'll put a link down below. That really uh, exfoliates the rubber, uh, goes down to a molecular level, deep down into the substrate to do some cleaning. I think that may help you. And the third question... Um, staining on uh, plastic trim that has been coated with chrome. So the chrome plated trim. Uh, and he's tried a lot of the non-aggressive um, chrome and metal polishes out there. I would uh, suggest you give this a shot. This is Extreme Solutions White Box. This is a little bit more aggressive. You've seen this before. This is the... Um, cotton sort of fiber that's uh, soaked in a uh, surfactant that is excellent for polishing and cleaning uh, metal surfaces, chrome, aluminum, brass, all of that stuff. And that is going to do it for today's mail call. I hope that helps. Keep the questions rolling in. You guys are fantastic. I will supply the email link below where the questions should be submitted. And until the next video, you guys have a great day. I truly hope you're enjoying the content from the channel. If you are, be sure to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. That will let you know when we have fresh content available for you.